Welcome back, everybody, to another Two Tamers Talk. We got another special one for you today. Uh, Jeff was indisposed today, so we got the next best, latest, greatest thing. Basil's back. I'm back. He's back. If you're sick of me, too bad. <laughs> if you guys don't know Basil, check out, I think it was two or three weeks ago, um, Jeff did an in-depth interview with our top ten regionalist uh, a couple regionals ago. Uh, Basil, he's also provided some great deck profiles for the video or for the channel, I should say, uh, and check those out for sure. And we got more coming for you. So how you doing, man? Good. BT13 pre-release is pretty much in the rear view. There's a couple more in our area, but I think we're just about done with them. Yeah. And uh, now we're just putting everything together. Yeah. So a lot I feel of... like we spent the whole weekend together. <laughs> yeah. We were. Uh, we did three. We back did, to we back did to three back. back to back pre-releases, yeah. which is, uh, you know. A little much, but it was a lot. It was a lot for me, <laughs> even because I'm used to doing maybe two, uh -huh. but three was three was pretty happy for me. Yeah. All six packs. Ah, how'd you do? Uh, I have never in my life won a pre release, <laughs> and this was no different. Um, I don't know, I'm just carried by deck construction, I think. And uh, this one was a weird one. Mm -hmm. uh, we can, I guess, just start talking about it. Yeah, this was the, bl the blocker pre release. This was the block. <laughs> and so if you had like Jumbo Ganymon, Craniumon, Waltz End, and then yeah. just like all of the rookies and level fours that were blockers. Eventually, your board state would just be that, and then you just stare at each other until yeah. it ended. Even the level five, the Gizm uh, Gizmo, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 XT. Yeah. No, no, the um, the black one, the black blocker that had the inheritable uh, when an opponent suspends on their turn. Or oh, whatever, oh, crash of security. Oh, um, Gyromon. Gyromon, that's Gyromon. it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But another blocker. Yeah. Like, it was just wild. And uh, Boncho Leomon, like, Boncho there was Leomon. blockers on every single level. It was it was, it was, was one of those pre-releases where you definitely have an advantage if you play in multiple. Yeah. Because you really get a feel for yeah. how this is going to all play out. And then the only removal was the, the Shine Gray option, which was minus 12k. Yeah. Which didn't out Craniumon or Ma Jumbo Ganymon, because right. they're both 13k. Yeah. And then the... Uh, the blue one mirage galgamon bounce option yeah which it just put it back in its hands so you're gonna see it in two turns anyway yeah or the next turn because yeah, it costs or eight next turn. <laughs> if you so. yeah yeah it was a it was not a pre-release of removal it was a pre-release of can you get around a million blockers yeah yeah it was it was definitely interesting um i did i did okay i did i went second in the first one and then i won the second one that i played in i think we we fought for first yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and then uh i got crapped on pretty hard in the last one uh, but it's all you about got, you got a psychmon out of it i did get a psychmon out of it yeah and then just waiting for the better one out of the tp9 <laughs> winner specs yeah you know when we get back to those so yeah. no it was it was it was great pre-releases all the way around uh the six-pack format is always interesting especially when you do multiple pre-releases you're just like by the second pre-release you know what you're hoping to pull mm -hmm. And it's just that combo. I think the winning combo was that Craniumon with the Waltz or whatever. Craniumon Cran with Waltz End. Waltz End, yeah. And then uh, you're always looking for a bunch of eggs because mm -hmm. you only get six packs. But yeah. then you had a chance to pull King Drasil. Yeah. Like, well, you can't really play that. <laughs> you don't want to pull that as one of your eggs, yeah. yeah. And it's, it fills up an SR spot. Yeah. So what could have been Craniumon or, yeah. or any other Royal Knight is yeah. just a card you can't play. Yeah. I think a big part of it, too, was, you know, it's just like any pre-release. How many eggs did you pull? Yeah. And there's a direct correlation. I mean, so the the two rounds or the two pre-releases where I went second and first, I pulled five eggs. Yeah. In both of those. That's huge. It's huge. It's, it's just so much more draw power, especially with all the rookies you play and how many of the rookies actually have blocker, like we said before. It's just so easy to just throw out bodies and be defensive at the same time. But yeah, it was it was fun. It was, it was interesting. But I for think sure. what we're really excited for is now it's time to... Put some decks together. Yeah, absolutely. And we have some good ones already for you guys for the for the uh, for the channel. I can't wait to get into this format. Ask me again in three months. How yeah, I'm it's excited. Gonna, it's gonna be a long one. Yeah. Um, but right now, there's just you know everyone's got a million ideas popping here, popping there, and I'm excited to see. I'm excited to see the early decks, but I'm also excited to see. Uh, what happens in October, right? Yeah, and early November when people are like done with the Royal Knight stuff, and they're <laughs> two just... two months from now, and people are done playing Shine Greymon. They're like, yeah. "Damn, what, let's get back into some of these level sixes. Maybe we can build something with it." Yeah, <laughs> start seeing uh, uh, purple Lord Knight Dynasmon yeah. decks. You know, something like that. Who knows? 
It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting for sure. But what's the first thing that you're gonna build? I was well, I'm a, a green kind of aficionado. That's what I really like. So okay. Rosemont burst mode's been on my radar for a long time. Yeah. Um, the interesting thing about it though is a lot of the lower end and the tamer, you don't really need to just use it in Rosemont. Mm -hmm. Like it can work in not only like Bloom Lord, but kind of in any green deck. Yeah. Just because the inherited on the Sunflow and the Lal Lalamon is reduced digivolution by one if you have a green tamer, not necessarily into a plant or a fairy. Oh, okay. So you could use that in like Taiga Tyrannomon deck. You could use it in Grandis Insect kind of deck too. Like your search is going to be a little bit dead, but. Mm -hmm. Can still use it that yeah. way. Yeah, I think the rule of thumb here is uh, also uh, with you, whatever you play, you're just going to pull the ghost rare. <laughs> this <laughs> guy got, pulled uh, two of the burst mode ghost I, rares. I, I, I pulled the Rosemon, the green Rosemon, and the blue Mirage Galgamon. The funny thing is, though, is you put your Rosemon stuff together, and then you pulled the Rosemon, yeah. and then you started playing Mirage Galgamon. Yeah, and, and then pulled, pulled it. The, yeah, yeah, I built both. Those are two of the first decks that I built, and I yeah. pulled both of them. So. Yeah. Lucky guy over here. What a pre-release for you. Out <laughs> yeah. of a pre-release, yeah, too. Yeah, that, 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 that was the true winner of the pre-release. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I believe uh, between Jeff and I, we opened like 18 boxes. Yeah. Didn't pull a single one. Opened, and you got one out of six packs. Yeah. I, well, I opened a total of about five boxes worth and yeah. pulled two ghost rares, which is it's pretty good. Odds. That's insane. It's pretty good. Well... We have some other stuff to talk about. Yes, tournament which I'm results. excited that you're here for this because you've played in multiple regionals, Ultimate Cups, so you are uh, very experienced in yeah in this uh, in this uh, rigamaru as it yeah. is. You know, um, what's your what's your experience? Just kind of a brief overview of what's your experience as far as uh, how many Ultimate Cups, how many regionals, and what I've, what do you th what's th how taxing is it to play for eight or nine hours on your computer? Well, I've entered two online tournaments. Okay, it was a region. Uh, both were from Top Cut, a Top Cut Regional, a Top okay. Cut Ultimate Cup. And I went X1 in the Regional, and I went X2 in the Ultimate Cup. Oh, okay. Uh, they were both. One was nine rounds, one was eight rounds. Is brutal. Um, if you're trying to play a defensive deck, I don't recommend it. Mm. Your rounds are going to be long. That's a lot of taxing. on. And I think that kind of reflects what we saw in these results. A mm. lot of aggression, a lot of uh, uh, heavy swings. So Yeah. Not a lot of ties. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah right. You yeah. don't really want to go to those ties. Yeah. All right. Well, let's jump into it. So let's jump into, let's do the fun one first, the Oceania. The Oceania. So I, uh, you were one of the first person I text when I woke up and I saw this in the morning because <laughs> it was wild. So this is one of the only, I, I'm going to say these are probably like the only two regionals that are going to be EX4 format. Right? Is there more regionals the, in the yeah, EX? Yeah, there War? was one this past weekend. This the one on Saturday, right? Yeah, that's yeah. this one. That's the Saturday one. That's the North Perfect. America one. Yeah. So I think that these are the only EX four tournaments. This was such a small format that uh, it's wild. Yeah. Like it's just such a small sample size. Uh, but so Blue Flare got first. Right. Uh, we've seen previous lists running that new uh, the Sakuyamon little it's called. Kuzahuma, Kuzahuma, some, some, something yeah. like. That. But the uh, the strategy there is to what? Just play your blazing memory boosts or your sore eyes and stuff for free. Yeah. yeah. Or we'll see another option you could play a little bit later on. This one choosing just for the blazing, and I think that's. I mean, you play it, and then when you play an option, you play level four. Mm. You can either play the Greymon and search four. That's smart. Or play the new male bird and give one of your opponents ice wall. Oh, okay. So, Sort of like a, some people think of it as kind of like a win more card, mm -hmm. which I can see. But also, once you get into people are a lot of times leaving the Z gray nowadays, yeah, and they're leaning to her. Well, after they go into the decker or the, uh, the cyber launcher, they don't really have anything else. Mm -hmm. And now you do with the new level six. Gotcha. Yeah, great deck. Not surprised to see Blue Flare take a tournament. Um, and then return of Beelzemon. Yeah, we Beelzemon. got second place coming back strong. Yeah, be people kind of thought, well, Beelzemon, you know, doesn't have the EX2 Impmon, which obviously was a huge, yeah, you know, huge, yeah. huge engine for the deck. Um, but I think it's still 
very, very strong. Especially yeah. uh, Ultimate Cup even recognized that, and you can only play one Death Sling yeah. in the next Ultimate Cup, in the next wave of Ultimate Cup. Yeah. And so I think uh, a lot of people moving back to the on deletion Pagu rather than the mill two when you swing mm -hmm. Yaman, Yaman, which I think make, makes a lot of sense. I thought it was still better that way overall. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people preferred the Yaman. But now you're looking to play the old on deletion mill three Impmon. So, you know, promote an Impmon, swing, it dies, yeah. mill five. It's not as good as having the EX2 Impmon, but it's still very strong. Do you think that this deck survives an Ultimate Cup without Deathslingers? That's such a good card. It's going to be hard to say. Yeah. You still have the Wizard Mons. Yeah. But so you still get the, the gain the, memory on yeah, yeah, the the memory extension was really important. I could see people going for, like, Missed Memory Boost. Yeah. Or something similar to that to replace the memory. It but still doesn't remove a body. It just, it, just, yeah. it just slows you down a little bit. It'll be interesting yeah. to see. Ultimate Cup, the next Ultimate Cup, really strange. It'll be wild because with all the new cards. Because it's going to be stuff that we know is good versus the BT13 stuff, which we think is good. Yeah. Kind of seeing those clash will be interesting. Yeah. All right. Now, this is the one that I text you about because <laughs> we've been talking about this deck for months. We've been talking about how is it good? Is it cringe? Is it just... Is it bait? Yeah. You know, like a lot of that stuff. But and here it is. Here it is in top three. Now, do you think that this is because it made top three because it's actually like a really strong performing deck or if it's something that people just didn't tech against? I think that this deck is a good meta answer to a lot of stuff. Okay. Like if people were trying to, I think Bloom Lord was one of the stronger decks in this format. The only thing it got new in EX4 was the egg. Okay. The, uh, uh, when you suspend one of your own Digimon, draw one, which is really strong. Um, but this kind of answers that with the Alter S. Yeah. Because when you Hydramon the Alter S, it spits out two level six. Mm -hmm. And so it, it has an answer to that. Um, and I mean, you know, if, if it draws well, it's yeah. into a level seven from a level four. Right. And there's not a lot you can do about that. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it clearly performed well here. Interesting text to me, though, is that uh, a lot of the deck. I mean, obviously, like m most of the decks you see use that Greymon, right? The the dual color, but yeah, the ST five Agumon <laughs> choice Agumon. blew my mind. I thought that was yeah. funny too. Because doesn't the red and black one search a Greymon and a Tamer? The the or an Omnimon and a Omnimon and a Greymon, right? It searches an Omnimon or a Greymon and a and, Tie yeah, on top and a tie. four. Yeah. The bad thing about that is your egg is always Sunomon. Yeah. So it is one to Evo. Yeah. The the thing that kind of caught me off guard was the analog boy. Because if your stack is dying, in my mind, the game is like lost. Pretty much over, right? Yeah. So maybe that was just their strategy to deal with. Or like maybe they were intentionally wanting their their alter s to die so they could spit out the two the yeah. blitz gray and the crest and then analog boy to like pass turn maybe i uh, heard a strategy that they were using the analog boy because all of the uh searching in this deck puts the cards you don't use back on top of the stack right to trash what you've searched. trash what you searched could be so yeah could be, could be. <laughs> but it's uh i mean i guess it, it also accelerates like if something does die you get to hatch an egg mm -hmm. and restart your stack a little bit faster yeah um, so there's that. Everything else makes sense, though. The Matt mm -hmm. and Ty, the yeah. Nokia makes a lot of sense. And then two boosts is what, how much cards you have left, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But look at that. There you have it. Enjoy while it lasts. Do you think you'll <laughs> see this on the top of another regionals I, list? I, I don't think so. I don't think so either. But in, prove in, us wrong, uh, Oceana. Ulti in Ultimate Cup, you lose Ty and Matt and your other Tamers. So yeah. I think. And I the Alter S. And the Alter S is white, yeah, yeah I think. Yeah, yeah that's, that's uh, you're, you're done for an yeah. Ultimate Cup. That's not, yeah. Um, and then coming in Supreme, I love this. Yes, I was excited about this. Number four was Ulf Wars. Um, kind of like I've been talking about on some of my videos, there's not a whole lot you got from EX4. You got that gold Vidramon, and it was really, without EX or uh, BT13 stuff, it was really tricky whether or not you wanted to tech that in. It's a good Evo, but it's not a good Evo in Raising. Because you don't get inheritables. And so typically with Old Force, you want to build your build your boy in raising. Right. So essentially, what I would use that gold V-Dramon for is um, the Searcher V-Mon. So it gives you something to do with that Searcher V-Mon the next turn if they don't kill it, rather than just swing with 1k and die. Yeah, I think uh, 
and we were we were talking about like oh well there's a new old force but it's no. there's no way to put it in this it's, it doesn't it doesn't do enough yeah yeah um good in the good as a one of in the royal knights deck but yeah it's i don't think this deck changes a whole lot um i have a list that i've changed that i've been testing i know you and i've messed with it a little bit it's it's a little farther out there than i want it to be so we'll we'll see how it goes, but I definitely included the the gold Vidramon. It has put in some work. It is nice to be able to Evo that for two on top of the searcher, um, pop a two K. Yeah, so, something to do and do, yeah, and then it has armor purge. Board. So if you swing with the six K, it dies. You're just back down to the Vmon. So it's kind of nice, um, and it's got a cool alt art. So and it's got a cool, got which a cool, is always good. It's always good. <laughs> All right, so we're done with Oceana. Let's jump into North America stuff. This is the fun stuff. Okay. Here too. This was... I, I have to say, first yeah. and foremost, I tried to warn you. <laughs> Zero-cost memory options are coming for you. They're the devil. And I thought it wasn't going to happen for a while. I thought North America was behind on this curve, but uh, here they are. Yep. So Here we are. So, interesting list for sure. Um, I don't even know where to begin with this. This takes, like, so many pieces of what other people contribute to the channel and kind of throws it together. I know, like... Yeah. I'm used to playing against Lilithmon because Jacob on the channel plays a lot of Lilithmon, but we haven't seen Lilithmon in an aggressive deck in how long? Yeah. Uh, the the thing is, is this is not an aggressive deck, and mm -hmm. I need to I I need to shout out the person who created this deck, which is Tessero. He's mm -hmm. another YouTube guy. He's like the purple guy on YouTube. Okay. Um, and this is if you've seen uh, on your ch on the channel is the Purple Merva, uh -huh. the Merva Turbo. This was the inspiration for that deck. Oh, gotcha. Because, and this particular list was inspired by a list in Japan that's doing the same thing. He added the Creepy Mon and the Rivals Barrage Death Slinger. Okay. And uh, this deck mills you out in a very short amount of time. Mm -hmm. and so that's sort of the strategy here. And it's, it gets up from a Gilmon and Raising to a Shine Gray Rune mode way faster than it. Yeah. And so And once Ruin Mode's out. And it's... once Ruin Mode's <laughs> out, you can't do anything. Yeah. And because you promoted your em egg area is empty, hatch, play another Gilmon, play another couple of boosts. Yeah. Minus ten K blanket until your opponent's turn, and then they do it again. And all the while the Gil the War Growl mills two, the Black War Growl mills three, and then by that time they can either go into Lilith again. Oh. Or go into Creepy Mon and then mill nine. Jesus. And by that time, either all the cards you need are in the trash or you don't have any cards left. Wow. So do you think you're going to see, like, how would this, what, how, what would happen in the mirror with this? <laughs> that is a very good question. Because you know what's going to happen is people are going to see this and then people are going to build it. Yeah. Right? And the, then. That, so the, the, the messed up thing about this deck is it's Ultimate Cup Legal as it stands. It's mono, that's wild. It's mono per. Well, they have to. Two Death Slingers. Death have Slingers. To go. Yeah, yeah. But it is mono purple. Yeah. And so I think people are going to be playing this at Ultimate Cup. I've got a couple of things cooked up in here. That is, these are trade secrets that you don't <laughs> get exactly quite yet. But uh, I think this is going to be popular. And the only reason I think it's good that this is popular is because Bandai is going to realize that zero cost options got to go. Yeah. And it's not that it needs to be restricted to zero like MDF. But it has to go to one because if you have more than one, it becomes abused, yeah. in my opinion. No, I mean, if you look at this and you look at some of the other stuff, I mean, there's even some more decks going. We'll just jump over to the second deck. Sure. Uh, another blue flare list. Interesting. So this one stuck with the Zeeg. Didn't go with the Kuza. No, but... Yeah, this but, is a more pretty traditional list. Yeah, yeah, but threw in that Hammer Spark. Yep. Which, come on, I mean, Hammer Spark's only one memory. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is nasty uh, in security, but it, yeah. But the, the, and then the, the interesting thing about Blue Flare is they play the original Kiriha, which is a memory setter. Right. And then the new Duo Tamer, which puts you to one, or sometimes you have multiple of them too. Uh, and then Blazing Memory Boost. Yeah. So it's not so, uh, it's not like you're going to be starved for memory in that deck anyway. Yeah. And you always have, uh, a three memory rush level level five. Yeah, ready to go. You think Blue Flare stays super relevant after BT thirteen? I do. Uh, I think Blue Flare is is strong. I think I think Blue Flare is a, a noob crusher because if you are not aware that if you can't have two bodies on board, 
If then you're not aware of that, that then yeah. your game is completely. Yeah. So at that point, you're already down one zero. Yeah. And uh, the other good thing about it is, if they play like a searcher and then swing, and hit either memory boost or hammer spark or a tamer, then they can't promote their thing in raising, or else they're gonna have two two bodies. forces yeah. on on the field, and that's yeah. gonna activate all of their abilities. Raymond inherited, metal gray. Decker Gray, all of these things yeah. are going to be activated when you have those two bodies. Yep. So you have to have a very specific game plan versus Blue Flare, or else you're going to get crushed. And I think that everyone's learned the hard way not to promote <laughs> yeah, your second right. body, <laughs> or if it, you, or if you are one of those decks that does like, like Jessmon or something, you, you need to just go wide on the turn you're going to win. Yeah, you yeah. know, not <laughs> don't wait another turn or else right. you're done. Uh, blue third, <laughs> blue flare was third too. But interesting, yeah. you got a superior mode in there. Yeah, the uh, the superior mode tidal wave, uh, strategy, can tuck it with the Decker Gray mm -hmm. and the Cyber Launcher, and then you have a four memory superior mode. Kaiser nailed out. Yeah, yeah, with the Kaiser nail. Yeah, and uh, another way we're seeing the Kuzahuman play is the Kuzahuman can play the tidal wave. Or the Kaiser, Kaiser Nail, Nail. Yeah, yeah. and then the Kaiser Nail can play out the superior mode. So now it's a even cheaper That's superior wild. mode. And there's, I mean, when you have that staring at you and your board is stunned. 17K printed. Yeah, it's like, yeah. all right. <laughs> What's going to stop it? And then at the end, we have this awesome black war gray. This is, this this is, is this the is, definition the, of abuse. Yeah, this is the, the Kori Kaku special. <laughs> um, this was a list I was talking to Jeff about uh, in the interview we did. Uh, it's a little bit different because it has the, um, the lightning joust for a little bit more damage mm -hmm. because they don't have the red training option. Mm. Um, but it's pretty much it bar for bar. Um, you're just going to search a lot with your gray mons boys and then eventually you're going to have a big 10 memory turn you're going to go into promo black or gray mon and swing a million times with two chimera stacks together yeah, that's with huge the, with the chimera yeah it's a yeah. lot so you're gonna have a lot to digibird yeah but you're also going to get all those inheritables while you're doing it yeah mo you know, most you're gonna, of them you're going to be strategic about what you're digibursting out right. because you're going to want to keep all the you know uh dp boost and stuff until the very end but yeah yeah, I mean, you're going to be able to just go nuts. Yeah, I see, I've seen variations of this list. It has the the yellow, red-yellow Agumons. Oh, I've yeah, seen so you can Blinding Ray. <laughs> well, that, yeah. that's the reason, but yeah. I've also seen variations of this list play with uh, the Punch Marcus yeah. for another one memory check. Yeah, gotcha. That makes sense. Yeah, that's a crazy list. You got your cool boys. You got it pretty much does all the nasty things in a black war gray deck without playing the nasty black war grays, the yeah, ones that you're it, used it, to. This is not this is not a defensive deck. This is uh, an OTK strategy. Another abuse of the memory system. Yep. So three out of our top four decks, all using the zero cost options I tried to warn you about. Yeah. <laughs> they're here now, and so they're, they're gonna on, be around. They gotta be on Bandai's radar by now, I would imagine. You would think so. But I mean, they got to be on the radar because you're getting a Gravity Crush alternate art. We're getting <laughs> the yeah, new event bl pack. Blinding Ray getting in the RB. In uh, the RB, yeah. RB01, and then yeah. uh, Gravity Crush in the in the event pack five. So yeah. maybe they don't care. Sounds like they don't for now, <laughs> anyways. Until uh, until there's one deck I think that runs just crazy over everything else. It seems like that's the only time that they tend to jump in. Yeah, we'll see. We'll. St I think the Ultimate Cup will be interesting because obviously you only get. One or the other. Yeah. And it's monocolor format. So I think uh, whether it's like a red hybrids or Mirage Galgamon, or maybe we just go straight back to War Gray, or yeah. maybe this Purple Mill thing just completely takes over. But uh, yeah, the memory system, not really a big factor in, uh, in these yeah. fast regional. <laughs> well, my next question to you, sir, is what do you think is going to be the next big, the big. Uh, the big boss in BT13. What do you think you know, is going to be the one that, like, the Black War Gray of BT9? Yeah, I think everybody was expecting it to be Shine Gray. Mm -hmm. And I think that the Shine Gray deck is really strong, but what it's it's still missing the same stuff that it was missing, which is that consistent draw power. Oh, okay. People are playing the, the draw Coralmon, but you don't really swing with your Greymons that much. Not until you're ready. Yeah. And... Now the tamers they have the new one has an on play effect but none of it adds to hand 
the only thing that adds to hand is the EX4 Inheritance. Mm -hmm. So hand size is still an issue. Um, so what I'm really scared about is Mirage Galgamon. Yeah. First mode. I think that is going to be the top deck in this format. Um, oh, you're calling that one as the top, the I top think, dog. I think okay. so. The only reason is I think it has, I think it has the best burst mode. It's really good because it's when attacking is not once per turn. Yeah. And so you can easily swing a whole bunch of times because let's say you promote a level stick or level five and you have uh, a Thomas on the field and can either swing now or go into Mirage Galgamon and then swing. The inherited's on the level fives all unsuspend if you have eight or more in hand. Probably do because the U Thomas draws for your opponent and yourself. And then you can swing again. If you have the old Thomas, you can unsuspend it again. And you can go into burst mode and bounce some. Then you can swing. When attacking, it'll trash a bunch of cards. And then you'll gain a bunch of memory. The same as the old Mirage Galgamon. Okay. And then if you have four memory, you can hard play the Thomas again and then swing, put another card in their hand. And then when you swing, you trash one more card and unsuspend it again. It just goes nuts. So I yeah. think, and if you have Nikolai, these are all jamming checks. Yeah. And so I think that is going to be, uh, that's going to be the deck to watch out for, in my opinion. Uh, I see people tinkering with the Shine Gray yeah. with um, playing the yellow base, Coromon, the uh, minus deep Coromon, and the new Kudamon Searcher. Yeah. Because it grabs a yellow tamer and a vaccine. Yellow no, vaccine. A yellow vaccine. And the whole line is yellow vaccine. Yeah. I think that could be uh, really strong. I think Ravemon and Rosemon kind of fall behind those two. I don't think they're quite as strong. I think. Alphamon is a really strong answer to Shine Gray, but I don't know how well it does in matchups. Yeah. Um, and I think the, the last deck that's on my radar to be a really strong contender is Belphamon Sleep Mode. Really? You think so? I think, I think that deck is really tricky to build. It's a, it's a tricky one to pilot. Yeah, yeah for I sure. Think, I think there are a million different ways you can take it. I see people playing things like Nidhogg. So when you trash on your opponent's turn, you just pass their turn straight up. Uh, I see people playing the Eismon package, which I think makes sense. I see yeah. people skipping that, just going for the Fascomon and uh, and Floodgates and stuff like that. Yeah. I think eventually someone's going to crack something with that deck, and it's really going to be hard to deal with. Because once they get into Belphamon with the Rage Mode underneath, not a ton you can do about it, mm -hmm. because it's not affected by anything. Um, the only way that you can consistently deal with it is with Raid. Mm. Um, but it's, I think that could be menacing uh, eventually. So two decks I'm going to throw at you. So you don't, what about Royal Knights? You don't think that that's going to be a contender or do you think it's too tricky? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't played against it yet. No one has put it quite together. We yet. played for, we played one round. We played, we played, <laughs> yeah. I've played little, very, very little, little against yeah, yeah, it. Yeah. Um, that's another deck. That's a huge puzzle. Yeah. Um, but also, my focus is kind of on the Ultimate Cup side of things right now. Yeah, that's, and that's definitely not going to work in that. Yeah. That won't work, work in Ultimate Cup. But um, it's another thing. It's one of those things where it's like someone's going to pull up an old BT6 card that's going to fit perfectly into it. Yeah. And be like, oh, my God, it completely breaks the deck. Yeah. But I don't know. All right, I got one more. Yeah. What about Jessmon? What about my boy? Mon. The new Forgot support about cards. Jessmon. The new that's support the cool, cards. That's the cool thing about this set is yeah. that there's so much... So much, not just so many decks, yeah. but so many, I feel like, strong decks. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, Jessmon. It's like, what was it missing? It was like consistent memory gain. Yeah. Okay, here's, here's all the here's pieces the whole, for that. Here's yeah. the whole line that's consistent memory gain. Yeah. So. No, that was the crazy part. That, it was another MVP for me in pre release, was Jessmon. Yeah. The actual just, Jessmon. Yeah, right. Does, does that Jessmon go in the Jessmon deck? I don't think so. But it was amazing removal yeah. in, in that because it doesn't matter what else was on side of it. It just got 2K more deletion right. for all your other little bodies. So it was really good. Yeah. But all right. Should we jump into cards of the week? Sure. My first ever card your of the week. Your first ever card this of the week. This is like a dream come true. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Um, I'll go first. Sure. So like we talked about before, we played in what feels like 100 pre-releases. Mm -hmm. 
I remember like some of the pre-releases when we were like, oh, is it really going to go to four rounds? We were so tired. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> we were like, oh my Let's God. just do three and done. Um, but no, there, there were certain cards that you looked for a lot in pre-release. And this one did a lot of work for me in all the games because I pulled it, I think, in every pre-release was BT-13 Craniumon. Absolutely insane card. If you got it with the Waltz's end, it was kind of a, a ridiculous, like, you're dead combo. It killed me uh, in the first one, which made me get second. Um, it's it was just it's just nasty. It forces your, your... You get to force one of your opponent's Digimon to attack. It's kind of got that, what is it, like, Laplace's Demon or whatever Laplace's, that was? I was going to yeah. say, for all of the uh, black enthusiasts, yeah. uh, as Sephirothmon... When Digivolving and the places demon built in on the card, yeah, printed, yeah. and it's one of those things where it's like you don't know if it's just like, oh yeah, it's just crushing because it's pre-release, or it's like, could we build a Cranium Mon deck that would be like threatening? Yeah, and, it's probably coming. Just stay tuned to the channel. I yeah. think we got one in mind. Um, but the fact that it's not uh, affected by your opponent's Digimon is really strong, especially against green. Yeah. Uh, yeah, had an opponent yeah, try can't and bounce it. can't suspend it, can't do anything to it for a turn. So it's really nasty. Uh, it's just one of those things, especially in a limited format like this with very little to no removal, yeah. um, you just have to deal with it. I think the only way people dealt with it was Platinum Sukumon. Platinum Sukumon, the D-Digivolve, yeah. or uh, waiting a turn and then using and, other options. Yeah. All right, well, that's mine, my guy. What do you got? I was also thinking about a pre-release card, but... With how much I've been building decks and trying to put things together, I have to make my card of the week the Sunflow Mon. The new, the new one? Mon. Okay. Because uh, it's another one of those cards where I, I read it and I was like, yeah, that seems all right. And then you re read it again, you're like, wait a minute. And then you see someone do something with it and you're like, hold on. So obviously it's good because you can suspend it and then go into Lily Mon for one and then yeah. play Yoshino. I think that's what everybody saw. But. I was tinkering around with kind of like a hybrid Bloom, Bloom Lord Rosemon strategy. Okay. And if you promote an Agitar and play it with the Agitar, you can use its effect and you don't have to digivolve that Digimon. You can digivolve the Agitar into the Bloom for two oh, shit. and then gain two. Yeah. And then gain one off the Agitar. So you're gaining so it's, memory it's by going into Bloom. It's a net cost of plus one, which is... Better than we've ever been able to do into yeah. Bloom Lord, which we could already get into. Yeah. So I think that uh, I think that is really strong, and there are more fairies coming in BT14. Mm. So I think this is going to be a, a mainstay in purple, not just in vegetation decks. In purple. I, I, I'm sorry, in green. green. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be a mainstay in green, not just in vegetation decks, but in green decks. I think. Yeah. For a while. Gotcha. Yeah, I know. We were playing. We did some testing against... I, you just kept doing things, and I'm like, man, you got a lot of stuff over there for yeah. very little memory. It, it yeah. does not cost a lot. Yeah. All right. Well, it sounds like we know what you're building, what I'm building. Uh, you got some more spicy decks coming for the channel? There, there's one super secret deck. This is another, uh, another very interesting strategy that I think a lot of people haven't thought of. Okay. Um, Going to keep that one close to the vest? That one's until... close to heart. This one is another... Uh, Another more on the casual side of things, but another one that has insane high roll potential. Okay. So that's kind of one of the secret things I'm working on. All right. Is that going to be an ultimate cup deck? No, no, no. No, no, no. Okay. This is even, a, even this spicier. Is a, this is a, you finish your match at the locals early. And it's like, hey, do you want to play some more? I've got this thing I'm working on. Gotcha. And then you bust that and out. And then you bust that out. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Well, I look forward to seeing it. And uh, thanks for joining us, man. This of was an awesome experience. A lot My of pleasure. fun. And uh, stay tuned for more of Basil's deck profile videos and uh, contributions to the channel later. So uh, thanks for joining us, guys. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, as per usual. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.